everybody, and this week I've been having a tinker around with not one, not two, but three games. Yes, today is going to be a quick fire review video about three games that I got through the PlayStation Store. Oh yeah. So can I please get an intro now? So, the PlayStation Store. I'm on this thing every day, whether it be on my consoles, online itself, or on my mobile. And yes, I'm mainly on it for the games, if you couldn't tell. And recently, PlayStation Store challenged me to go out into the store and find three games that span a variety of genres and different tonalities, and all of them have to total up to less than £50 altogether. So, I thought I would share with you guys today what I managed to come up with. Basically, what I'm saying is, challenge accepted. And I've got to say, even before playing the games, the experience that I had on the store was lovely, with an extremely easy button on the home menus of the PS3, PS4 and PS Vita to take you straight to there, and even easier categories and ways to find out what you're particularly looking for with the search options, such as finding the latest PS4 theme, or just going for a specific game. It's very easy. And on PS4, I didn't even have to worry about the games finishing downloading before I could play them, because I could play the games while they were downloading. Very dang cool. But is it as cool as the first game we're going to talk about today? Firstly, something relevant to the spooky month of Halloween, Limbo on PS3, PS4 and PS Vita for £7.39 at its current price. I will admit that Limbo has been covered to death by this point, but there's a good reason for that. It's a great game. A slow, calculating and awesomely cruel cinematic 2D puzzle platformer that takes place presumably in limbo where you have to avoid death on every turn and save your missing sister. You may be a little boy in this game, but this game does not go lightly on your failures at all. Bear traps, electric shocks, brain sucking maggots and most notably, a really angry giant spider. All of these things are out to grind you to a pulp in the most gruesome way possible and it's the amount of ways that you can shockingly and suddenly kick the bucket which makes Limbo, one of the most threatening places in video game history. It's not scary per se, but extremely atmospheric in an auditory, visual and mechanical sense because you don't have any extra abilities or special powers, you are a little boy. All you can do is run, jump with a tiny jump arc and grab things and pull them and push them and that's all you can do. And it's because of this vulnerability that makes scenes such as the giant spider much more sinister by nature. And like I said, this is a cruel game very cruel. Not in a checkpoint sense, because there are plenty of checkpoints in the game, but like even if you know what you're doing, death is extremely hard to avoid in this game because of your character's limitations, and the game makes sure that you're slow, careful, and processing with your brain to make sure that all the puzzles and logic puzzles and platforming challenges all get solved in the most careful and slow way possible. You can't really rush through this game, and that's why death itself feels like such an event, especially when you see the only source of light leaving the monochromatic world from the character's main eyes once he dies pretty dark. And there are even some bravely lacking scenes in the game, such as the boat ride, which is like a timeless, beautiful moment in the minimalistic plot. And the only thing I really don't like about the game is the fact that it really does lose steam in the later half. I mean, the puzzles are still good, but platforming-wise and thematically, it starts running out of ideas, and it becomes a lot less intriguing the closer you get to the end. It's also not the longest game in the world, which is a shame because I would love to stay in the universe of Limbo a little bit longer. But overall, after tinkering around with Limbo, I'd have to give the game a high-end commendable. It's a fantastic and original take on the cinematic platformer that has held up really well after all these years And if you haven't played it yet, seriously, go and try it out because it's a dark and brooding adventure that is begging for you to explore it Next in the line of fire, Entwined, a PlayStation exclusive on PS3, PS4 and PS Vita and for $6.49 at its current price and what is this game exactly? I'm not sure, but it's good. Entwined is a really difficult game to describe. I mean, I could say that it's a rhythm game, but it's not really a rhythmic game in a player interactive sense. It's more just like a minimalistic dreamscape that you partake in. Definitely the simplest game I've talked about so far. Entwined is a story about two creatures that want to be in love and be together, but they can't, and you've got to help them get together. And that's pretty much all there is to it. And that, unfortunately, leaves me to my first dislike about the game, and that is the way that the game presents itself. Not literally, I mean, it's a beautiful game, very vibrant and graceful, with a gorgeous soundtrack, but... I mean, with the way it actually shows itself off. It's a very simple game with a very simple premise, yet paints itself to be this deep psychological journey, which I honestly can't see. I mean, I suppose that's open to interpretation, but I didn't get that. But what about the gameplay? That's the main thing. And like I said, it's very good. Very simple, but very good. Each stage pits you against a long portal that you move automatically down, and you have all these gates that you have to go through with your characters. And by using the analog sticks, you move the sticks exactly where you want each character to go and 
that's pretty much it. But it gets so absorbing, it's indescribable. I mean, like I said, I wouldn't call this a rhythm game because you don't move the characters in time with the music. You pretty much move the characters into the beats before they happen, as it were. And as it gets trickier, it becomes an intense game of coordination and concentration, but it just drifts through all of these so naturally, and it flows with how natural it feels. Instead of a rhythm game about precision, this is a rhythm game about flow and captivation that gets only more engrossing the harder and longer the stages get. And by the end, each thumb is working against each other and counteracting to try and confuse you. One thumb's doing one thing while the other's doing another, one staying still while the other one moves, and all the gates start wiggling and getting longer, and it gets really tricky. It's hard to describe, you just have to play it really, and it's one of the weirdest but coolest gaming experiences I've ever played through. And because it does get so tricky, the feeling of euphoria once you beat the stage, without messing up of course, to then transform into this dragon to then fly around and pick stuff up, is just great, because it does feel so rewarding when you get that far. But after tinkering around with Entwined, I'd have to give the game a low-end commendable. It's a very fun game, and very hard, and of course I haven't played anything like it, but it's not absolutely perfect. This is best experienced on PS Vita, if you ask me, with a good pair of headphones, due to the short stages and the ability to tackle each stage wherever you are on the go. It's basically built for that, and it's solidly made enough for me to say, go out and give it a try. Now, another game for the spooky month of October Ween. Here we have Soma, retailing at $23.99 at its current price. And it's another game from Frictional, but is it as good as Amnesia? Well, in my opinion, not quite, but it's still a very well-crafted game. Soma is a first-person survival horror game, and it's a story about a man with severe brain trauma. And one day, he goes for a routine scan, but then wakes up from it to find that everything on the planet has gone horribly wrong, and underwatery. And unfortunately, I'd love to discuss how much deeper, smarter, devilishly intriguing, and suspenseful this plot is compared to Amnesia, but unfortunately, the more I talk about the plot, the more I spoil it. Every single plot detail in this game is a spoiler. You definitely need to experience it yourself to see what I mean, but rest assured, it's a massive step up from Amnesia, and one that quite surprised me. I was also really surprised to see how much the production qualities have expanded since Amnesia, because Oh my god, this is a drop-dead gorgeous indie game, and the sound design, wow, the best thing about this game for sure. It captures every detail perfectly, and when the game wants to scare you with nothing but its sound design, it does it so well, it's magnificent. It's structurally solid as well, with new and more horrid threats appearing as you go through the game, and the spoon-feeding of the story to you comes as a great reward for passing some of the trickier bits. As far as the other scares go, I'm afraid to say that I did not find this as frightening as Amnesia, and there's a few reasons for that. Firstly, the design of the monsters. They aren't too creative, to be honest, and they behave much more predictably than Amnesia's monsters, leading you to make much more processed and calculated decisions based on paths and making a formula based around that to run around the enemies, and you don't ever feel like you're truly being hunted down, as it were. It's a little bit disappointing, yes, but the way that the enemies behave is enough to make me nervous, especially at the beginning of the game you encounter this, like, fish-robot hybrid giant thing, and the unnatural jagged movements and loud footsteps and just sudden stops and everything that the thing moves, even when it's walking normally is just wow it was really well done and when it chases you just like I said the sound design helps it's the banging and the jagged movements and it really does make you panic a bit and the scares themselves are actually pretty different from amnesia's in the sense that the dread is elongated like you have loads of different things that happen in sequence to keep the tension up and then the payoff is the chase at the end of the tension but you never know when the chase is going to be coming and you're not going to be prepared for the new enemy that you're going to encounter and how you're going to get around it in that sense this is a game more about tension and payoff than it is about utter terror and unpredictability which is still good as especially considering that the logic puzzles with no direction at all are back with a vengeance. But I just wish there was more unpredictability to it, like more supplies, like batteries for your torch, more inventory-based puzzles, because they're pretty much gone as well, and more hiding sequences, just more random things that were in the first Amnesia game that could have made this game much scarier. But it's still brilliantly made, don't get me wrong, which leads me to give this game a commendable. It's a great game in its own right, but not as good as Amnesia if you ask me. There were a few aspects taken out that I wish weren't, despite all of the great production quality, great story elements, and great sound design. But still, it's a fantastic Halloween treat for this year, and a gross one at that. So altogether, did I spend less than £50 for these three great and extremely varied games? Well, PlayStation, challenge beaten. £37.87.
And this is saying as well that these games are at their current price on the store right now, so consider a sale or something at some point, and these could be even cheaper. And to sum this whole video up, I'd say that my favourite game out of these three was Soma at £23.99. Because I really admire how it doesn't live in Amnesia's shadow and does its own thing really well, and I appreciate the much deeper story, the better sound design, and the better visuals. I'm insanely happy that Amnesia was followed up by this, even if I don't think it's as good as Amnesia, and I do really appreciate as well the more diverse and unique take on the level design, and of course the universe building, because castle is a castle, right? I do love my physical copies for sure, you guys know that, but for the utter 24-7 convenience, value for money, multiple genres of multiple games on multiple platforms, and huge catalogue of games not just for modern systems with modern games, but also the abundance of PlayStation 1 classics, I can't stress enough how awesome the store is, not to mention, very easy to navigate on all three systems. And I've just been talking about indie games in this video, let's not forget about the AAA games with all the DLC and add-ons, all available on the store same day as physical releases, and not to mention some of them even have early access windows before the physical copy comes out. If you're a PlayStation player, seriously consider getting any of these games I've been talking about today, and seriously consider going to the PlayStation Store more if you don't already, because you'd be quite surprised what you can find there for an awesome price, because I've been surprised on more than one occasion. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to just um, trawl through the store to find some more things. Uh, I guess you don't really want to see that, do you? Yeah. Farewell, everybody, and until next time, take care. Hello everybody and thanks so much for watching this video and if you enjoyed it please like, comment, share, subscribe and do all that stuff because every little thing you do helps my channel grow and helps me keep making two videos a week for everybody because I love doing it and everyone seems happy enough to watch them so that would be fantastic and also thanks again to PlayStation Store for the opportunity to work with you guys on this video. It was a pleasure to work with you guys. Click on the screen right now for some more random videos and go in the description to find social medias, games grab a collection so you can see what I'm buying and playing and getting on my shelves and what equipment I use for my videos and that's that's all I gotta say really, so have a great day everybody. If it's your birthday watching this video, happy freaking birthday to you and please remember to stay beautiful.